Hi, my name is Vitek, and today we'll be talking about grid systems in UI design. Welcome to Synergy Cafe. So let's organize your designs. Let's bring in some symmetry and design rules which we can in the end learn how to break. Because nothing feels as good as breaking design rules, right? Let's get right into it. But first, let's talk about grid systems. So what is a grid system? Well, basically it's a structure of columns and lines that allow you to organize your text and your photography and your design elements on the canvas. It brings consistency and feel of rhythm to your visual language. It's like a backbone of every design because it sort of holds everything together. It's a structure that lets us play with the layout, but at the same time, it keeps it all organized. So a quick recap of the basics. The grid systems are made of series of columns. They stretch from top to bottom and they are always the same size. Next up, the gutters. They are the small spaces between the columns and depending on the project, you can set them up to however you like. Last up are the margins. They are the empty areas on the sides of our grid system. We use them when we don't want to fill the entire space of the viewport and have the content centered in a specific area. Okay, so how do you use grid systems? Well, in every design tool like Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD, there are layout options to define the grid. In other vector and print oriented software, you can always create your own grid using hidden layers and guides. So the best place to start would be with the most popular 12 column grid system. It's particularly common because it's very versatile. You can easily divide it into two and four and three and six even parts. Basically, you can group the columns to whatever you like. Usually, the decreasing size of the grid will adjust and drop the number of columns accordingly when you switch between desktop and mobile or tablet view. So the 12 columns will change into eight or four or three or even one on the smallest viewport. So what I've seen is that some people really worship the grid systems. Other people ignore them altogether. But I think the best approach is somewhere in between. Okay, so now that we know the standard 12 column grid, let's take it up a notch, shall we? Um, you could argue that the standard grid system can severely limit your creativity. It could generate very repeatable and actually quite boring content. So there is a way to escape that. You know, this is going to Fibonacci, right? And yeah, I'm aware of all the golden circle memes flying everywhere on the internet, but I promise you, you're gonna be very surprised with how much utility lies within that um, mathematical Italian ancient witchcraft. So Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers with a pattern that each number is the sum of the previous two. An example would be 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. It's a fantastic grid system that is very dynamic and gives a great contrast between element size, space or distance, but there is even more. First, the grid itself. It lets you measure the relative size of elements on the layout and you can measure them in or out, depending on your needs. For instance, if you're designing elements to fit inside a page or a container, you're gonna measure them in. You can also determine the font hierarchy using this system. By setting up the perfect size of the smallest type element, you can determine all of the sizes going up. So here you can see how nicely they fit together like a one happy family of sizes. And each one is quite different and well contrasted with another one. Next up, the color tints. After you determine your color palette, you need all of those different tints for different UI components. 
the system will help you to create five or even more separate tints with good contrast between them in no time. You can see how standard color tints with contrast incremental differences are too alike. There is no particular contrast between those pairs of colors. And now let's put it all together and see how different grids impact the layout. As an example, this is the layout based on a 12 column grid system. And this one is based on Fibonacci grid system. But remember, in the end of the day, you are the designer and you will be the judge of what looks good and what just doesn't. But there is one more thing you can do with the layout and that is breaking the grid altogether. In every project, there is a good time to break the rules. But first, you need to make sure that the core of your work sits perfectly on the grid. Therefore, when you break it, it looks intentional, not like an accident. Large hero sections, design covers and custom components are perfect places to break the grid or how we say, go off the grid. After such a refreshing and engaging section, the user can dive right into the content that is organized and poised and that translates into readability and ease of navigation. In those off-grid sections, you can use asymmetrical elements that bleed out from the page or bold typography or cool offsets. In the end of the day, it's all about adding your own unique style to the design that creates a flavor that can make almost anything interesting. You can take something as obscure as a financial report that doesn't inherently sound very interesting, right? But has massive potential. You can stylize that and focus on the details of what makes that report unique, what numbers should be emphasized and how the information fits the hierarchy so it makes it all understandable for the user. Finally, feel free to adjust the design to your own taste and break the rules where you feel like it. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and see you in the next one. Peace.